Welcome back to Love Murder Current Affairs, our show about the stories of love gone fatally wrong that are in the news right now. A few brief updates before we get to our main topic. In the murder of San Francisco tech executive Bob Lee, Bob's accused killer, Nima Mameni, has pleaded not guilty. He also appeared in court on Wednesday where he had a disagreement with his attorney about the date for his preliminary hearing. His attorney had wanted to move the date back, but Mameni disagreed and will be back in court on Tuesday, May 30th. Additionally, court filings released nine new security camera images from the night of Bob's murder, including multiple shots showing Bob and Nima together in an elevator and then getting into Nima's white BMW, as well as shots of Bob desperately trying to flag down cars near the crime scene after being stabbed. In the murder of Eric Richens, even more dubious financial dealings from his wife and accused killer Corey have come to light. Between 2015 and 2017, Corey purchased at least four life insurance policies on Eric that totaled around $2 million. And Eric didn't know about any of them. Authorities say that at the time of her husband's death, she was in debt to the tune of millions of dollars to her husband, the government, and even a moneylender. Last in our updates, Timothy Bleefnick, the man accused of killing his wife, Rebecca, after telling a family feud audience that marriage was his biggest regret, is officially on trial. On Tuesday, witnesses for the prosecution, including Rebecca's sister, Sarah Riley, took the stand. Sarah testified that Rebecca had told her that she was concerned that her estranged husband might actually physically hurt her. In September of 2021, Rebecca texted Sarah, if something ever happens to me, make sure the number one person of interest is Tim. I am putting this in writing that I am fearful he will somehow harm me. The prosecution also shared a number of Timothy's highly suspect Google searches around the time of the murder, including local police response times, how to make a homemade silencer, and how to use a crowbar to pry open a window. A crowbar was exactly how the murderer accessed Rebecca's second-story bedroom window, and that trial is ongoing. But Jesse, I think you and I both know how those Google searches look in court. Ugh, not good. Also, that's terrifying. Yes. Ugh. In this week's main story, we head back to Utah, the site, of course, of the case of Eric and Corey Richens, for another unbelievable crime. On Friday, May 19th, the Layton City Police Department started circulating this almost unbelievable media release. They wrote, At 9.45 Friday morning, May 19th, 2023, Layton PD dispatch received a call from a man who stated he had just killed his wife, mother-in-law, and father-in-law. Officers immediately responded to the home. The man remained on the phone with dispatchers and was instructed to exit the home when he was taken into custody. Officers then entered the home and located three deceased victims. Those victims were identified as Anastasia Stevens, 36 years old, wife of the suspect, Becky Stevens, 61, stepmother of the victim Anastasia, Donald Stevens, 73, father of Anastasia. The suspect was identified as 34-year-old Jeremy Bailey. Jeremy Bailey and Anastasia lived at the residence where the incident occurred. Becky Stevens and Donald Stevens were Nevada residents who were visiting this address. In addition to the three victims, ugh, and I am sorry for all of you animal lovers out here, three of the family's dogs had also been killed. A motive for these crimes has not been determined yet, and the cause of death is still being investigated. This shocking note exploded around true crime communities, hitting the Love Murder discussion group almost immediately. Thanks to Amberlynn R. for recommending the case. The idea of a husband who has just committed this atrocity calmly calling the police and turning himself in is, well, horrifying. So what have we learned so far about this unbelievable case? Local news outlet KTXV has been reporting extensively. On Saturday, May 20th, they wrote that according to the probable cause affidavit, Jeremy had been, quote, thinking of doing this a few days ago. What's surprising about this, Andy, is that he did not actually kill himself after this and was taken into custody because he had also written a terrifying message on his wife's Facebook page earlier. He wrote, massacre suicide, Jeremy Bailey just killed everyone, Becky Stevens, Don Stevens, and three of the four dogs, 1832 East Gentile Street, Layton. 
Dozens of Anastasia's friends started responding, asking her to call them to please let them know that she was all right. When Jeremy called the police at 945, it sounded like he had intended to kill himself as well. That would match the massacre suicide phrasing he used in the Facebook post. He told police that he had committed the crimes around 20 minutes earlier. When the police searched the house, they found the victims spread throughout. On the upstairs level, the three adults who had been killed were each in a separate room. They said that early indications were that they had been shot. They also found a handgun, a box of ammunition with cartridges missing, and spent shells near the victims. It also appears that there was at least some premonition that something bad was going to happen. Earlier that day, one of the victims, the affidavit did not specify which one, had messaged a therapist saying that they had uncovered something. They said, I think we may have a very real problem. So I uncovered a load of his shady shit, and it's really bad, like scary. I think it may be time for legal interference. I know I definitely need to find an attorney, and he's still at the house, so I can't talk. Jeremy also seemed to have some misgivings about his own desires. Police report that he told them that he had moved his guns to be stored in a friend's garage because he had been thinking about doing this, and presumably at the time didn't want to give in to the impulse. However, apparently on that fateful day, Jeremy found a different gun, a 9mm handgun that belonged to one of the victims that he had forgotten to move. Police later discovered evidence that he had purchased ammunition for the gun around 9am. Still, the motives remain unknown. Authorities did say that Jeremy had told them that he had had some sort of argument with his wife, although the specifics were not clear. According to local news outlet KTSU, neighbors hadn't seen any evidence that the family was anything other than completely normal. Delmar Stevens, who was no relation to the victim, said, They were friendly, gave me their names, and said, If you ever need anything, give me a call. They seemed like ordinary people, neighborhood people. Dwayne Porter said, I talked to Jeremy a couple of times. They do this ridiculous Halloween deal that's unbelievable and then a Christmas deal that's unbelievable. Another neighbor, Lanny Cottrell, said that while he got along fine with them, they had noticed some issues between Jeremy and his father-in-law, Don. She said, I drove by the other day when I was going to work or something, and him and his father-in-law were out there on the road, and they were having a very heated argument. Other neighbors reported that they thought Anastasia's parents had come in part to help her and Jeremy navigate their marital problems, although police have not yet confirmed that. A friend of Anastasia also posted on her wall after the murder saying, I talked to her yesterday and her parents were there trying to help her get out of the situation. Police were disturbed, it seems, by Bailey's behavior after being taken into custody. They reported hearing Jeremy say, I can't believe I did it, in what they described as an excited way. They also said that he asked for the death penalty, preferring it to life in prison, and even asked if they still used firing squads. He also asked that the surviving dog not be taken to the pound. <sighs> that poor dog. These poor people. I mean, this is unbelievable. There is very little information that has come out about Jeremy and Anastasia so far. Jeremy's Facebook page says that he worked at Hill Air Force Base in Utah and that he was a former aviation ordnance man in the United States Navy. His profile photo has a picture of a man in a Jason-style hockey mask with a U.S. flag in the background and the word Valhalla written on it. Based on his public photos, he was extremely into paintball and shared many images of his time in the Navy. Anastasia loved dogs and was a dog trainer. She was also an artist who seemed to love Halloween. Her Facebook profile shows a set of masks she made of characters from The Nightmare Before Christmas. At the time of the recording, the Facebook post that Jeremy posted is still up. It has become something of a memorial. My heart is broken. Our family is never going to be the same. Another person wrote, I will cherish our memories together. You are such a special person. Still, another said, RIP Don, I sure had good times with you rebuilding that Jeep several times. Jeremy Bailey faces a slate of charges, including three counts of aggravated murder, three counts of felony discharge of a firearm, and three counts of aggravated cruelty to animals. He is being held at the David County Jail without bail. There are GoFundMes. There's one for Anastasia and one for her father and her stepmother. We will absolutely include links in the show notes. Obviously, the loss of these human lives is more important, but I'm wondering with her being a dog trainer, 
if that was some sort of retribution or revenge or if the dogs tried to defend the family. Yeah, I don't know. He's just sick. In the very least, I'm glad that there weren't children in the home. Yep. Well, we'll continue to keep you updated on this and all of the cases we talked about earlier. Until next time, I'm Jesse Prey. And I'm Andy Cassette signing off for Love Murder Current Affairs. 